So, Miriam Taves is the best-selling author of Summer of My Amazing Luck, A Boy of Good Breeding, A Complicated Kindness, The Flying Troutmans, Irma Voth, All My Puny Sorrows. She is incredible. We're so lucky to have her here as a host. I, could, I was trying to pick and choose things from her bio that I could actually tell you that you might not know, but I doubt there's very much. She's the winner of a Governor General's Award for Fiction, the Ro uh, Rogers Writers Trust Fiction Prize. She's been a finalist for the Giller. She's won the Marian Engel and Timothy Finley Award. Please help me welcome to the stage tonight, Miriam Taves. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, it is um, a, a tremendous uh, honor to be able to introduce and, uh, and to interview Eden Robinson and to talk about her amazing book, Son of a Trickster. I'm very nervous because I, you know, I've never interviewed a writer before. <laughs> and um, so um, when, when Eden's um, editor, Anne, asked me, um, Eden had mentioned that, you know, maybe I, maybe I might be interested in doing it, and, and, and asked me, and I was so honored and so thrilled that I immediately said, yes, of course, and, um, and, and, uh, and, then, and then time passed, and, you know, and I just became more and more nervous and thought, but, uh, but, but, here, but here we are, and I'm so, and I'm so thrilled. Eden and I actually, um, we, we go back, um, we met uh, for the first time, I think it was the first time, in a, in a van uh, full, full, full of writers. Uh, going to actually um, to to a writers festival, the Eden Writers Festival, which is named after um, Eden, <laughs> and uh, and it's it's true, and, and um, it's you know it's a very cool, laid back, uh, fun festival. So that's why they obviously had to call it the Eden Literary Festival. So um, so that was amazing, and uh, I uh, am just, yeah, thrilled, <laughs> like I said, um, to be here to, 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 uh, to talk with Eden. Uh, the book, uh, Son of a Trickster, is, um, I think it's her best, best work. It's, it's um, heartbreaking, it's hilarious, it's um, subversive, uh, it's um, harsh, it's brutal, and, uh, and so, so, so deeply tender. Um, and um, I know that, uh, that you'll be blown away by it and, and so moved uh, by it. I'm going to um, just uh, quickly, I'm going to read uh, the back flap. <laughs> of Eden's book, um, and, and uh, you know the, the bio page. Um, Heisla Heltzuk, novelist Eden Robinson, is the author of a collection of short stories written when she was a goth called Traplines, which won the Winifred Holtby Prize in the UK. Sorry. Her two previous novels, Monkey Beach and Blood Sports, were written before she discovered she was gluten intolerant and tend to be quite grim. <laughs> Monkey Beach won the Ethel Wilson Fiction Prize and was a finalist for the Giller Prize and the Governor General's Award for Fiction. In 2016, Robinson Eden won the uh, Writer's Trust Engel Findlay Award. Son of a Trickster was written under the influence of pan-fried tofu and nutritional yeast, which may explain things, but probably doesn't, which is a line that I just love. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, Eden Robinson. <laughs> uh, in 2008, there was a, a recession, uh, and it mostly didn't hit Canada, uh, but uh, the, the, the places that were hit didn't get a lot of recognition, or they didn't get a lot of acknowledgement. So there were a lot of places uh, uh, for instance, in Kitimat, uh, we had a pulp and paper mill called Uricane, uh, and it closed down uh, not long after the recession started. And 535 people lost their jobs. And uh, it does something to a community of 8,000 to lose that many families. Uh, and I, I really wanted to see that in fiction. I, I really wanted to have a family that was working their way through that. Um, uh, and then the trickster hopped in. <laughs> <laughs> As tricksters do. <laughs> uh, and it went a little nuts. <laughs> so it was supposed to be incredibly grim. <laughs> 
grim and it's funny. Great. It's still grim, yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. but there's there's <laughs> moments when it goes absolutely bananas, mm-hmm. and uh, I had a lot of fun writing it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there are some there are some really dark moments. Mm-hmm. That I'll uh, say there are some really dark moments, and yeah. I'm just I mean you've you've said that a trickster story is always. Uh, a funny story. Mm, Tricksters yes. are always funny. Can you yes. can you talk a little bit about that? About the, the okay. nature of a trickster. What is a trickster? Okay, uh, I'm writing about a specific trickster. There's okay. there's many different tricksters, and some of them are benign, and some of them are wonderful, and some of them are uh, some of them are very, uh, you know, they're very helpful. Uh, our trickster. Uh, in the high flow tradition is the trickster we get, Mm -hmm. uh, the transforming raven. And one of his roles in our culture was to teach teach young people uh, about our protocol, our nuyum, by breaking all the rules. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So he was the bad example. Uh, so he would do a lot of crazy things that you know normal people weren't allowed to do, but he got away with it because he was the trickster. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he was. Uh, so when I was growing up, uh, after supper we would we would all get around the the kitchen table and we'd smoke and drink coffee and tell stories. Trickster uh, stories. Tricks. Uh, some of them, you know, family stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, usually they were they you were trying to out funny each other, right. so there was a lot of laughter. Mm-hmm. So uh, so the the trickster stories were always a little earthy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, so I tried to incorporate that in the book. Um, uh, Monkey Beach, actually, I, I wrote a novel called Monkey Beach, yep. and it had a lot more sex scenes in them, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. but... Uh, that was before the tofu. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah <I was> like, <laughs> but so the comment I got back was, you know, those were hilarious, so <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. And when you're writing an erotic scene, that's mm-hmm. that's not the reaction you want. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's yeah. why Monkey Beach has no sex. <laughs> <laughs> mm, um, Monkey Beach mm. also, though, the, the character of Lisa mm-hmm. in, in Monkey Be- Beach, I think, was also kind of trickster-esque. I mean, she could communicate yes. with the dead, right? Yes. And see people's souls. Yes. Um, so this is obviously the whole, you know, trickster mm. thing is something that is resides in you in a yeah, he mm-hmm. made a he made a cameo in Monkey Beach. It was about like a paragraph, and mm-hmm. he was he was living in the West End in yeah. Vancouver. And yeah. <laughs> that's nice, right? <laughs> um, and so and so the, tri- the so the trickster we get we get yeah we get we get yeah okay we get we get we get um, it so for for Jared mm-hmm. um, and I don't want to give too much away I mean the Spoiler book is Spoiler alert huh? Yeah I mean <laughs> the book is called Son of a Trickster Yeah yeah So so uh, so, so Jared's the main character <laughs> Okay you said it not me Okay so <laughs> But Jared, Jared's reaction mm. to this idea that may or may not be in the book yes. um, of him being the son of a trickster is like he's so it's so funny because he's yeah. so furious and yes. um, you know and he and he he wonders am I human or, or what the you know what the yes. heck is going on and why wasn't I told and now I understand yes. people's reaction to me yes. um, and all and all of that stuff I'm just curious about that that choice like his Jared's response to um, to to being the son of a trickster. Uh, it, it, in this book, he's highly okay. resistant, and he doesn't want to believe, even mm-hmm. when all the evidence is there. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just like the way his reaction contrasted with mm-hmm. um, uh, when he started coming up against mm-hmm. uh, real magic, and when mm-hmm. he started coming up against uh, the fact that maybe the guy he thought was his dad mm-hmm. wasn't really his dad, and how mm-hmm. that the emotional things that were going through his, mm-hmm. you know, his mind mm-hmm. uh, as he figured that out. Uh, so he, he actually had a lot of anger, and that mm-hmm. surprised me. Mm-hmm. I was expecting a, a different reaction from him. Jared is uh, Jared is 16 years old, and he's an intensely lovable. I mean, he's a he's the kind of protagonist that you want to um, rescue and adopt Aww. and kind of you know <clears throat> shake at the same time. Yeah. You know, he um, <laughs> he takes he takes care uh, in a in a very kind of you know cool 16 year old way. He takes care of so many people, just about everybody really in yeah. in his world, and yeah. and um, and. 
maybe doesn't get a lot of that back. Yes. And yes. I'm, just, I'm just wondering, does this idea of him like sort of starting to understand the magic, um, how does this play into his understanding of his uh, in indigenous um, world and culture? Uh, he, he learns a lot about the supernatural creatures by uh, bumping into them, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, being partially eaten by them and things like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a kind of rough introduction, yeah, uh, yeah. but there are there are a lot of uh, aspects that will come up in later books where there are magical parts mm. of the supernatural world. Mm. He's just bump, bumping up against the parts that want to eat him right now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he can't ignore them because they're you know trying to yeah yeah, yeah eat him. Yeah. Um, um, can mm. can can you can you talk a little bit about um, what is quantum biology or quantum entanglement, <laughs> which is a very intriguing term. <laughs> well, I was, uh, let's see, I, I had a beautiful memory. I had uh, this, this incredible memory, and then I, you know, started menopause. I know, we talked about this a little bit, this menopause thing. Yeah, like we're both drenched in sweat right now, and like just, just about to fly off the handle, or cry, we'll suck whatever. Down the picture. Yeah. Uh, so I, so sometimes, you know, when I'm reading my notes, like I, uh, uh, somehow in my brain, I connected um, uh, a bunch of philosophers that I was fascinated with, uh, some some scientists who were uh, who had a, a theory about uh, how viruses mutated through quantum biology, and then somehow I connected that with magic, and it all made sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and now it doesn't. Uh. I, I know. But it doesn't matter because it made sense then. It's I'm hoping it comes back because <laughs> I have two more books. Well, it's alluded to kind of obliquely, kind of like you know semi obliquely, but in in this most beautiful mm -hmm. way. I mean, there's so there's so much in the book that is magical, that is you know that, that oper operating kind of on a on a different plane. Mm -hmm. I think you have referred to it as um, uh, what spec fic um, goth. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, but you know, all yeah, screwball gothic, uh, screwball, <laughs> screwball gothic, and you say that, and I appreciate that you say that it's screwball gothic, but it's so much more than that too, and that makes me or brings me to um, something that I really want to talk to you about, and that is how you use humor, mm -hmm. um, because you know, uh, Jared's reality is a is a really really grim reality in many in many ways. I mean, yeah. there's love there, and there's there 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 are good times, but you know, it's it's a it's kind of a, yeah. a difficult, dark world for him, yeah. in a sense, in many, many senses, yes. I feel. And, and, um, and yet, you know, there is so much humor in the book, and, um, and I'm just wondering, do you, do you like, is, it, is, is this something that you, and I get asked this question, and I never know how to answer, but yeah. so I'm, I'm just asking you, so I'll put you on the spot, but, you know, like, is it, do you, do you feel that the humor, like, in order, of, like, to create this world, this dark world, Mm -hmm. World, are you are you using it in, in a somewhat subversive way, and it, because it's so effective um, well, in in creating the humor, the so-called lightness is so effective in creating the darkness and making it so powerful. Oh, thank you. The juxtaposition. So I'm just wondering, mm -hmm. how, you, you know, what is your relationship to to humor, and how do you feel that you use it in your book? I uh, well. Uh, in in Kitimat, uh, Kitimat Village, the the Heisla have a pretty intense mourning. Um, the the deceased person goes to Makai's funeral home, and then they come back, and they're either embalmed or they're uh, or they're uh, cremated, mm -hmm. and they go home. Uh, they they you know they they they're in the li the living room. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, the family uh, doesn't leave them alone, uh, and their uh, people, the different clans feed them, uh, the different clans uh, host them, mm -hmm. um, and it, it seems like it should be a very dark period because you've just lost a loved one, and mm -hmm. and it is, it's wrenching, but uh, mixed in with that. A part of it is that people 
uh, the community comes to pay their respects. And you're all sitting around, and it's, it's like a wake, but not like a wake. Mm -hmm. uh, and you end up telling stories about the person. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are funny. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's a way of, uh, of healing, of coping with uh, losing someone that you loved very deeply. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have passed, but you mm -hmm. remember them. Mm -hmm. And you remember the good moments you had with them, and you remember... Um, the times when they drove you nuts mm -hmm. and, uh, and you share that. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the end of the mourning period, you know, you're ready to be alone. Mm -hmm. Whereas, uh, I, and I thought everybody did that. <laughs> I thought that's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, just th I just thought that's the way, you know, everyone uh, dealt with death. And it was, it was very surprising that mm -hmm. it wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is in a... Uh, but that's the kind of humor that's in the book. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a way of um, honoring and remembering and uh, uh, making that dark time less dark. Mm -hmm. um, can I can I just say here that you write amazing dialogue? Thank I'm you. Just, I'm just I'm just in awe of, of you. how you write dialogue because I think would you agree that dialogue is that thing that just brings the story to life and our characters to life? Yes. And you know when you can do that so well, it's yes. just uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty um, astonishing. I just want to read one other little section. Oops, here. Um, let's see. It's very I, short. I think it's you should short. do an oh, audio book like, for okay, me. Yeah. Okay, I will. Okay, you got it, Eden. Great whatever you, whatever whatever you like i'll go i'll go to the eden audio like it's with a eden literary festival it's the eden audio com company that it's all eden all the time in my uh, okay let's see where okay here it is here here's what i want what i want to read okay so um uh this is a, a just a little snippet of dialogue that uh between um jared our inimitable protagonist, uh, and, um, and his uh, kind of uh, a friend of his, a girl. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, and, she, and she says, um, uh, she's going off to a protest, and, and she says, if you, pro and, and he's commenting, Jared is commenting on her sort of, you know, kind of officious look, you know, like a suit jacket, and she's all, you know, kind of looking like, you know, more like a businesswoman than a typical um, kind of punky, hippie teenager that she actually is. Uh, so uh, she says to him, if you protest looking like an Indian, you get your head cracked and cool your heels and holding forever, she said. But if you wear the clothes of the oppressor, they let you call a lawyer. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and then he says, ah, the I don't know more protests. Anyway, and so I mean that's that's hilarious. <laughs> and uh, and and at the and at the same time, uh, so you, you know, sort of like earth earth shatteringly true, uh, and um, and 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 a difficult truth. Yeah. And um, and 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 I and I just want to know again, how do you, how do you do that? How do you how do you combine that sort of a punch? You know that like with 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 the, you know, with a very natural dialogue between teenagers. Uh, the characters were speaking very clearly by them, so they, they had their own rhythm and they had their own, their own way of speaking, and each of them was, was, uh, had a very different viewpoint. So mm -hmm. the things that they said in their own voices was very clear. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think after the Trickster series is over, as a challenge to myself, I'm going to write a book with no dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you could do that? Do you think that I would be know. enjoyable? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I think that would be... Because um, yeah. uh, I, I think uh, when I get comfortable with a skill set, uh, mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you just keep hitting that, you don't grow. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so I think I need to work on my description of things. <laughs> So um, <laughs> I'm just curious, uh, you know, about about your community. You live in Kitimat, mm, yes. which is 500 miles north of Vancouver. Yes, that's far, far, far away. Uh, uh, yeah, it's no, about mid mid north. Okay, it's, yeah, it's on the coast, and we're just yeah, we're like an hour and a half from the bottom of the Alaska Panhandle. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that does seem far away to me. And and and, um, <laughs> and when I think of panhandle, that's just not what I think. But it's you know so that it's another kind. Um, <laughs> uh, um, 
So I'm just curious about your community, mm -hmm. and uh, when you're writing, uh, do you do you worry about what your community oh, um, constantly yeah. thinks, and and how do you deal with that? Uh, well, I separate. Um, I, I try to be very respectful about uh, the things that my community is private about. Um, uh, so they uh, so. Uh, some of my family has told me that uh, they had such a bad experience being represented by outsiders that they just don't want to share certain parts of the culture anymore uh, because they, they have been uh, uh, so badly misrepresented. So uh, one of my, I was talking to one of my aunts when I was writing Monkey Beach and I had a potlatch scene and uh, I was talking through the scene with her, because uh, I, I didn't expect her to read the book, uh, but uh, I just wanted to run it past her. And she said, well, you know, we don't really want to share this part of it with even people outside of the community. Um, but what's happening inside the potlatch itself with between the family is fair game. Uh, so I've, I've used that as a guideline. Um, uh, so there's, uh, plus, there's, there's, um, if you're from the West Coast uh, and you're from a potlatching community, uh, there's, you, you, you know the names, you know the ranks, you know, you know the, there's a, there's a different structure. Um, uh, for instance, uh, uh, I was adopted into my father's community, uh, into my father's clan. Uh, there's three different beaver clans in the village because we fight a lot and break up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you're passionate. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm specifically from the two beavers sharing at the Tree of Life and um, clan, and I have a, 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 a name, an entry level name, uh, and it's a good name, uh, and it's noble, but not that noble. Can you tell us what it is? <laughs> <laughs> so can you, you know, tell us the, the so it's it's um, so I uh, to get a better name I would have to throw a potlatch but I don't have the rank to throw a potlatch wow so I would have to attach my business to someone else's potlatch so uh, that would require negotiation with the family that's throwing the potlatch and lots of gifting and. Um, a certain amount of dry goods, and so it's wow. a, it's a, so it's so explaining that in a novel um, is, <laughs> you know, you would have to be really interested in potlatch culture to, to. It you is know, fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, what kind of name would you like to have? I'd like my mother's name. She okay. got uh, uh, Sea Monster Rising from the Depths. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> That is yeah, I like that name. Yeah. I like the attitude of that name. Well, can you can you be that sea monster rising from the depths, Junior, or, like two, or like, uh, no? Her, uh, okay. Our names go back in the box. Like uh, when she passes, I don't inherit them. Those those names oh. belong to the clan. Okay. So okay. they go back into the box. Uh, my name goes back into the box, and then it's then then it's given out again. Okay. I don't have the right to uh, to have someone inherit my name. That's okay. I would need a, a different rank for that. But can you tell us what your name is? Uh, we will tell Uh Sorry. Uh, big big lady. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think sea monster rising yeah. from the deep is yeah. Yeah, uh, I like the visuals that go with it. It's, it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, that's very yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, so, uh, okay, so what... I forgot the question you asked. Did I answer Yeah, that's okay. So, so did I. It doesn't matter. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, well, it, you know, it, uh, I can't remember either. I, I was asking about your community, your community's response, you know, too. Oh, and, but oh, you talked, yes. you already okay. answered. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so let's see. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm 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 just curious too about something something else that that you said about um, 
you know, de dealing with, um, like, or your write your process, you mm -hmm. know, and I know that sounds kind of like a boring question, but I, and uh, I, but I really love to hear about, about uh, a writer's process. Oh, I could and, talk about that all day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, because, you know, uh, like, part of it is that, you know, I don't know if you're the same, but I need to imagine you, what you're doing, you mm -hmm. know, and sitting there in your room or wherever it is, and, okay. you know, like, I don't know what, some place in Kitimat, and, and, and when, and when you work, and, and, and also, what, like, okay, this, okay, part A, and then part B, like, what, you know, what motivate, what motivates you to, to write? Okay, uh, part A, uh, I have a one-bedroom apartment, mm -hmm. uh, two blocks from my parents' house. Nice. Uh, my desk is in my bedroom. Mm. Uh, That's convenient. You can just, like, yeah. <laughs> just sleep, just, like, crash Power right into that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> uh, when I'm, um, I find first drafts really scary mm -hmm. uh, because there's just nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, I like, so uh, I've, uh, I moved through that as quickly as possible. Mm. Uh, and the, I like, I like, uh, I, I've written the, the sequel to, to Son of a Trickster. Mm -hmm. and it's a trilogy, by the it's way. It's a trilogy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, uh, I got my notes from my editor, who's my editor. Hmm. Hey, hello! <laughs> 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 so this, this is the part of writing that I love. This is yeah. the part. Uh, so, uh, so I have a guideline to what I, uh, what I need to do to make the book stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, what I need to make the story more compelling. Mm -hmm. Um, so I love, I, I love paper, mm -hmm. I love sticky notes, I love, you know, highlighters, mm -hmm. uh, so I love to chop things up and, you know, see the through lines and find mm -hmm. all the characters. Uh, mm -hmm. And it looks, it looks, like, you know, like when you see the, the serial killer stalking someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You got, you know, thread everywhere. Yeah, like you just kind of crazed. Yeah, yeah, like paint all the windows black and. Yeah, it, like, look, oh, it okay, looks a yeah. little insane. And yeah, because you you lay it out on the floor and the yes. different pieces and yes. yeah, like a patchwork yes. quilt. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and can can I ask you just about you know being a a, a woman and writing and mm -hmm. um, you know and being um a funny intelligent you know contemporary writer writing writing about you know real stuff yeah. real real you know uh, di situations you know mm -hmm. obviously with the you know the the element of, of magic and trickster dumb but but you know r really like looking at um, stuff st straight on and and how do you how do you feel about the idea of of rage and what we what we you know women mm -hmm. we as writers, mm -hmm. how, how we process that in, into our fiction. Is rage something that motivates you? It, it, uh, rage motivates me for op-eds, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's not, it's a, <laughs> it's not yeah. a good source for, for fiction. Mm -hmm. it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't lend itself to, um, uh, to nuanced characters. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's great for op-eds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. But uh, <laughs> for, the, for, for, this, for this novel, um, the the motivation was simply to play with a trickster, mm -hmm. to, um, mm -hmm. and I had a lot of fun. And even when it went really dark, mm -hmm. uh, there was there were so many elements that I could uh, that, that I could bounce. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would, um, uh, yeah. So this, so all the other books I mm -hmm. wrote at night, mm -hmm. and this is the first book I've written in the morning. Hmm. Usually between four or five in the morning, hmm. uh, so it was it it came differently. The, the has news. a different tone. Yeah, than, yeah. Because of the time of day that you were. I don't know. Uh, 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 yeah. But it, hmm. stuff that I write at four in the morning is very different from yeah. Darker. Uh, or? darker, but uh, a little more zingy, uh, a little more fun. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so it was a great way to start the day. So would you say that you're having more fun writing now these days than you have yes. had in the past? Yes. Mm -hmm. But that, that's also because I've, uh, I've learned to trust my muse a lot more. Mm -hmm. I, didn't really, I didn't really want to depend on it. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it would go quiet and I wouldn't have any ideas. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I just uh, lacked a lot of confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And this, this time, uh, I think, uh, you know, there, there are downsides to menopause, but there's also, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's, a, there's oh. a gift. I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell me what that is. I'd like to hear it. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'm lacking a filter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That's so, fine. It's very freeing. So, so a lot of the things, you know, when they're mm -hmm. straight on in the book, that's, yeah. you know, I can be a little blunt. Yeah. And, person as well and that's mm -hmm. you know I consider that a gift because as women we're taught to be less forthright mm -hmm. we're taught to be um, you know if you feel anger you're supposed to transmute that mm -hmm. into something acceptable and something mm -hmm. more feminine mm -hmm. uh, so Maggie uh, Jared's mother was mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the, un the unfiltered like the Unfiltered, prototype. Yeah, of it. yeah. She, she was a lot of fun to write. She, yeah, she's an incredible character. I yeah, mean, she's her, so, you know, like just so so vicious and <laughs> lo and loving, uh, you know, in her way. Uh, yeah, tender and psychotic. Uh, yeah. Tender and psychotic. Yeah, yeah. She she's an amazing character. Uh, yeah. And she was, uh, you know, like the there was a scene where they had done unpleasant things to a dog, and uh, and she started flirting, like and. And it was, uh, that was not intended. That was not, yeah. um, that just. She started flirting with the guy so that he wouldn't like call the cops or, or like to, isn't this at the beginning? Yes. Of the, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, and, the drug uh, deal gone bad. And, yeah. Yeah. And Jared's and she got just, blood all over him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> most violent yeah. meat cute I've so ever So where written. does this character, so where, where, where does this character come from, this character of Maggie? Uh, Maggie? She was like, supposed to be like, a minor character. Yeah. Like, it was supposed to be mostly about Jared and his, you know, his dad. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and then the further back I went into their backstory, the, mm. the more Maggie popped up. Mm. And uh, she just had a way of dealing with things that I found mm. amusing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but maybe no one else will. Huh? Yeah, no, I think I gar guaranteed you will find Maggie. Yeah, a sort of sort, sort of appall like like appalling, compelling. You know, you want to spend time with Maggie. You really do. You want to be careful, but you, want, you really want to spend time. Yeah, amazing. And the teenagers' voices as well. I mean, oh, I suppose you. you know, with your nephew and niece, you know, like they must really you know inspire inspire that. I mean, they're just so 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 dead on and, and oh, well, like, well, monkey believable. Beach. I uh, got onto the the English 10, 11, and 12 curriculum in BC. Okay. Uh, First Nations English 10, 11, and 12. So I did a lot of uh, book tours and workshops in the high schools in northern BC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and when we're doing the workshops with like 30 kids or 60 mm -hmm. kids, it's really hard to do a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing like in a typical workshop. So mm -hmm. we would do group creative writing exercises. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were so creative and wild. Mm -hmm. um, they went everywhere, and their characters mm -hmm. did the most insane things. Um, do, you know, do, yeah. do, you, do you have any sense of what you would do if you weren't writing? I have no idea. Uh, yeah, how, yeah, how that would make you feel if you, if you weren't writing? Uh, I use it. I use writing to process the world a lot. Um, so I, I'm still processing Trump. Uh, <laughs> so I think I'd have to write for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I don't. I don't. Uh, it's how I make sense of things. It's mm -hmm. how I come to grips with things. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know how people who don't write deal with their inner world mm -hmm. when it gets chaotic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, okay, okay. Thank you so so much. I mean, I have... <laughs>